take charge of our health. With appointments few and far between and limited time at the doctor's office, be prepared before your next checkup. And here with some advice is an instructor at Stanford Medical Center, OBGYN. Please welcome Dr. Leah Milheiser. Hi, Doc. Hi. Hi. Leah. Can I call you Dr. Leah? Absolutely. Instead of Princess Leah, we call you Dr. <laughs> Dr. Leah. Absolutely. <laughs> it's great to be here. <laughs> so why should women be so prepared with stuff going in and why should they know what the doctors could ask them before they're even there? Uh, this is such an important issue. And if you look back historically, most of the information that we had regarding you know, treatment of disease, evaluation of disease was based on research studies done on men. So over the years, women really became more involved in scientific studies, and what they found is that there's a crucial difference between men and women in regards to their health. Women may suffer from diseases more often, like cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, depression, sexual dysfunction. Women may react differently to certain medications. Women may um, experience symptoms differently than men do in regards to certain illnesses. So for that reason, we really want to push the fact that women need to take charge of their health care. They really need to empower themselves when they go to the doctor. And one way to do that is to be goal-oriented. You are your best health advocate. Go prepared to give your doctor a comprehensive picture of your health and then work together as a team to make the best choices for your health care. Okay, so as you're getting prepared for your visit to the doctor, what does your doctor need to know about you? I know you say you should know, uh, he or she, should mm -hmm. know current medications, mm -hmm. herbs, and vitamins? Absolutely. So we're all guilty of this. When we go to the doctor, we say, okay, what medications am I taking? Because you're always asked that question, mm -hmm. and we think about our prescription medications. Mm -hmm. Well, 70% of Americans in the United States do not tell their physicians about what herbal supplements, over-the-counter vitamins, Chinese herbs that they may be taking. And this can have some serious interactions with with other medications. For example, St. John's wort, commonly used for the treatment of depression or anxiety as an herbal supplement. Mm -hmm. This can decrease the effectiveness of birth control pills, decrease the oh. effectiveness of certain HIV medications. If taken with other antidepressants, it can have serious complications, some even fatal. Wow. So we do want people to know that you, you really should tell your doctor everything that you are putting in your body. Yeah, it's critical, it sounds mm -hmm. like. You should also tell your doctor about sexual function complaints. Yes, so this is, you know, this, we're talking specifically about women today, but really this applies to men as well. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about sexual health, you have to look back to 1998. Viagra came out that year, all of a sudden you had a group of men having the sexual renaissance and their age match partners weren't, female partners weren't. And so because of that, you know, we've, we had some data that showed us that 43% of women in the United States between the ages of 18 and 59 had a sexual complaint compared to 31% of men. Mm. So people realize we need to have more information regarding, you know, how to evaluate women with sexual dysfunction, how to treat women with sexual dysfunction, and how to educate physicians to ask the right questions. Right. And so this has really happened over the last 10 years, and your doctor's office is the best place to at least introduce the topic. And if they can't treat you or they don't know how to treat you, at least they can refer you to somebody who does. And you say the doctor should also know if there's been any domestic violence. Now, why is that important? Absolutely. You know, domestic uh, violence or intimate partner violence is a huge public health issue right now. And what's happening is that physicians really are on the front line to sort of help you with this issue. You, when you go to the doctor, it's a confidential environment. You know, between, I think it's 5 million women in the United States are victims of intimate partner violence and 3 million men. So it's really a, for men and women. Yeah. And what we want people to know who are victims, that it's against the law. Intimate partner violence is against the law. It is not your fault. And it affects not only your health, but also the health of your children. Mm. Well, we have a hotline number on our website, so we'll give viewers that. And Dr. Leia will be back with more tips on how we should prepare ourselves before the next checkup. We'll be right back.
back with Dr. Leah Milheiser, instructor at the Stanford University School of Medicine's OBGYN department. And she has a checklist of what we should bring to our next checkup. And we talked about listing all the medications, vitamins, and herbs, including like Chinese herbs or like St. John's wort because birth control pills, because absolutely, you know, medications, if they combine with other herbs and stuff, could have like fatal, fatal. That's Reactions, right. right. So you also say we should write down medical questions prior to our visit. Now we're all guilty of this. I am particularly guilty of going to my doctor. The doctor puts their hand on the door to walk out the door and I go, oh wait, I have a question. Mm -hmm. And so you know, you really want to go prepared. Write down every single question that you have before you go in on a piece of paper just to make sure that you touch, you know, you, you touch on everything that you want to find out about. So, you know, a lot of people will get in their car driving away and they'll go, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And they wait another year to ask the question. Also, you can ask your doctor, is there a way that I can get a hold of you? Do you have email access where you communicate with physicians? So always ask because that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. So not only is your personal information important, but your family's medical history is also important, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, especially for women, we hear a lot about cancer syndromes, hereditary cancer genes, mm -hmm. BRCA, which can cause breast and ovarian cancer, and also so something called HNPC, PCC, excuse me, which is associated with colon cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer. You see these syndromes passing through families. Right. Although most of these types of cancers are sporadic, meaning they're not associated with a, a hereditary gene, mm -hmm. it can be. So if you speak to, if, if possible, speak to your aunts, uncles, mom, dad, brothers, and find out, is there a certain type of cancer that's been in this family so that you can come armed to your doctor's office right. with that's that information? Good, good. You say we should also hand carry a copy of our medical rector records from other doctors? Absolutely. So when you are switching physicians or when you are going for a second opinion, what you want to have always is your medical records. Now what happens is a lot of doctor's offices or patients will send a copy in to their doctor, but the fax machine can break, it can get lost in the mail, it can get lost on the receiving end. So what you want to do is hand carry in a copy as well, just in case, so that tests don't get repeated, medications don't get retried, and your doctor just can have a complete picture of what was done in the past. Yeah. So it could be like your dermatologist, I'm going to go see my OBGYN doctor, mm -hmm. I mean just any doctor. You know, it, usually we ask people to bring in records if it's pertaining to the same problem. So if you're switching to a new doctor mm -hmm. and you know, from a, one gynecologist to another, bring your records from your past mm -hmm. gynecologist. But if your dermatology issue relates to your gynecologic issue, which it can, mm -hmm. then yeah, it's absolutely important to and your next tip is especially important these days with people accessing the internet. Be aware of medical information gotten from the internet, Absolutely. derived from the internet. Definitely. So we all use the internet in our daily lives all day long. Why would it be any different with medical health, with, with, with health care questions? We get on the internet, we put something in Google, information pops up. You have to be aware anyone can write anything they want on the internet mm -hmm. about medical health issues. Instead of looking to those sites, go to a reliable source. Go to the National Institute of Health, go to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Those are reliable site sites that you can go to. And you know, you can take that information with you to your physician and just review it with them and say, hey, I found this, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. You also say that we should change into a gown prior to the exam. I thought that was like mandatory required anyway. <laughs> I know. And Sometimes I say I'm going to get a, in a lot of trouble with my uh, colleagues for this one, but for what I do, I, you know, I actually practice female sexual medicine. So I deal with women who are in a very vulnerable position to begin with. So what I have them do is I have them come into the room, we chat while they're, they're fully clothed, and then right before the exam, I, I have them change. Mm -hmm. And the reason that this is nice is that the patient feels more comfortable r relaying this very personal information to you. So, you know, if it doesn't bother you, great, change before. So that way, if you say, oh, I've got something wrong with my neck or my back hurts, the doctor can examine you while they're talking. But if it's something that's very difficult for you to talk about and you feel very vulnerable, just say, hey, can I change right before you do my exam? Well, mm -hmm. since you're on the topic of personal feelings and vulnerabilities, mm -hmm. how important is it for, how important is the doctor's gender mm -hmm. for a, a woman patient? You know, you know, this comes up a lot in my daily practice, and I think it's, it's personal preference. You know, m men and women are, you know, equal when it comes to providing health care for patients. It's got to be a patient preference. Right, so if right. you're more comfortable with a female physician, call your practice that you go to and say, hey, is there a female? If it doesn't matter, go with anyone, whatever there, makes you comfortable. Is there anything you cannot ask your doctor? Gardening tips. <laughs> 
Um, you know, anything, anything is, it's fair game. I mean, really, your doctor is your advocate and you're working together as a team and you want to make decisions as a team. So, you know, if you have a question that comes up and you're like, oh, I don't know, should I ask? Just ask. And if they can't help you, they'll guide you in the right direction. Gardening tips. If the doctor has dirt under her nose, <laughs> you can ask her for gardening tips. Uh, and I guess if the doctor doesn't ask you uh, the questions about the information you want to give, you should just mm -hmm. volunteer that information. That's right? right. That's right. You know, like I said, everything, anything is fair game. Yeah. So if you have any concerns and your doctor didn't ask you, if you're thinking, well, you know, I have been having some problems with my sexual function or whatever, bring it up with your doctor and again they'll refer you if they need to. Dr. Leah Milheiser so from Stanford University School of Medicine, thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Have a good day. That was a tomorrow lot. on the View from the Bay. Moms, let go of guilt. How to balance marriage, career, and kids while still making time for you. Then aging gracefully. What's possible? The View from the Bay, tomorrow.